And that caption on that photo from Alan Meehan was hard to kill. One minute, he was a poster boy for the Comancheros on Instagram. Tonight, the bikey gang Sergeant at Arms is in jail, charged with murder. The Comanchero bikey Tarek Zahed has been charged over a historic murder following his dramatic arrest in Sydney's eastern suburbs. In early May, the Sergeant at Arms of the Comanchero uh, bikey gang Tarek Zahed and his brother were at a gym when some gunmen broke, uh, burst in, opened fire, killed his brother, Omar, and there were 10 bullets put into Tarek's head. You know, everyone thought he was going to die. Amazingly, he lived and everything went very, very quiet. There were all these rumours, he's lost arms, he's lost legs. We didn't know a real lot about what was happening with his rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And now he's exploded back into the headlines. Mm. He's never far from them. And in the last week or two, We've seen photos. Yep. What was the photo? His first public appearance, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. So that was a photo. He was at dinner with Alan Mayant, who's the national president of the Comancheros. And also sitting at the table were a number of other Comancheros, including associate Mohammed Alamadine, who is Sydney-based. We talk about him all the time. He's a big focus of police. Mm. And it was kind of just this photo just lobbed. I think it was a Sunday evening, late at night. Alan Mayant posted a photo on Instagram, and I was going through my Instagram, and and there it was, and there's Tarek Zahed, the first time that we'd seen him since. As you said, he was shot 10 times. I don't think either of us will forget that night. The phones were going crazy. First that he was shot, and then very soon after that he died. And, yeah. and, and that was the, the rumour mill, when that was the word from reliable sources was that he was dead. But Even the cops just said, yeah. they knew one was dead. He said, oh, the other guy, he's been hit 10 times. Yeah. And that was including, over the including, ambulance. Including in the eye, including in, in the chest, in the leg and in the arm. And it wasn't looking good, but he's made an incredible recovery. And that caption on that photo from Alan Meehan was hard to kill. <laughs> yeah. It's the name of a movie. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it incre be, it's yeah. incredibly appropriate. Um, and, and then so for him to burst back on the scene, we all went, wow, okay, Tarek Zaid's back. And that was in Melbourne. It's become a bit of a safe haven for Comancheros because the New South Wales police have been giving them such a hard time up here. But on the weekend, he returned to Sydney, didn't he? he <laughs> He's come up here for a wedding. Yep. And he informed police mm -hmm. about, because uh, he's got very strict protocols, uh, about what he does in Sydney, he's uh, subject to serious crime prevention orders mm -hmm. and he has to inform them where he's going, where he's staying, what car he's driving. Mm -hmm. That is why he's basically set up shop in, in Melbourne because he can hardly move. He, the, the cops are all over him here, he's in a raptor in your rear mirror every day. <laughs> it's not a real lot of fun. So, but he's come up here for a wedding and then which we believe there were some uh, interesting guests there. Yep, I think he was there with a couple of associates of the uh, uh, Alamedine Organised Crime Network, as police police call them. Yeah. Um, so it was a big wedding uh, and there was a number of guests and Tarek was there and as you said, he had to tell police he was there and that was on the Saturday night. I know on the Sunday uh, he was meant to be around the Bondi area. He, he told was. police. Told police. Not only that, police actually said publicly that they knew he was at a cafe uh, in Bondi on yep. Campbell Parade. I think it was called Preach. The police said that publicly that yep. they had, they'd spotted him. And I think then he... Obviously, he was on, um, around the Edgecliff area in Sydney. So these are all pretty you know, well-to-do suburbs. But it was a very, very busy Sunday. Yep. I think you were, all out, you were out and about. I was, yep. New South Head Road. It's one of the busiest roads in Sydney, Sunday afternoon. A fine day. <laughs> Gorgeous day. <laughs> packed. And uh, next thing you know, there are cops screaming around everywhere. And there is what everyone thought was shots fired. Yes. But in fact, it was the cops using uh, what are called beanbag pellets. They pulled over the car. Mm -hmm. Tarek had refused to get out, allegedly. Yes, that's what and they say. And they go bang like that and dragged him out. And then there's vision emerged of him with a bandaged head yes. sitting on the, on the, on the footpath. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he's been injured either getting out of the car gingerly. Yeah, or, or, or being hit when those beanbag uh, rounds flew through. I mean, you could see the car, the window of that black BMW completely obliterated, yeah. a big hole. Um, and so he's, he's been arrested over a 2014 murder. That man's name was Yusuf Asun. He was uh, found, I think it was 50 metres up the road from Liverpool Hospital, bloodied and in a very bad way, and they couldn't save him. And so police alleged that, that Tarek was his killer. And I mean, it's incredible because that's 2014, it's eight years ago, and the task force that arrested him is, is a recently formed task force. Looking at a number of gangland-related murders. Yeah, they are, they are covering all of them, aren't they? they really, are. everything that's happened. And this is what we said, like, the police did come in a fair bit of criticism saying, 
why haven't they got anyone? Why, why aren't they doing this and that? But I've seen this before. They will we have a team of detectives mm -hmm. working very secretly behind on all sorts of crimes related to their targets. Mm -hmm. uh, everything from historical, as yeah. it's now emerged in this case, yeah. they're going to allege that uh, they have him for um, conspiracy, to, or, well, for actual murder from seven, eight years ago. So he's been banged up on that, which is interesting because now Mark Buttles is also in jail. Yes. Who is the Supreme Commander of the Comanchera. Yeah. Alan Meehan's got a bit of a task ahead. Although yeah. Tarek will go for bail. Yes. And the, the word is he's going to have a really red hot go at trying to get out. Isn't yeah. It? Well, I mean, uh, our understanding, I think, from when we've been, people we've been chatting to is he's, you know, he, he's well enough to be at dinner with these boys and wearing flash clothes and that kind of thing. But as you could imagine, when you've been shot 10 times, it's a long road to recovery. So there's a lot of rehab, a lot of appointments and, and that kind of thing. And he'd be on, on, on medication. And yeah. you would imagine that a, a strong part of the, of, of the, the bail application will be ongoing medical treatments needed that won't be all decently enough supplied in jail. Mm -hmm. The fact that it is a historic matter, and they're, they're traditionally, they're harder. We yeah. still don't know the brief of evidence, no. what, what they have on him. So it'll be interesting to see whether in the next week or two, uh, Tarek is actually back out of jail. Yeah, it will be. Um, Police have also now arrested a second person over that murder, uh, a man they who's also in his late forties, mm. um, who they allege burnt out the car. Oh, that's right. That was just today. So it's been a yeah. good week for New South Wales police. They'll say that because they also have arrested two people in relation to a double murder, uh -huh. uh, which in the gangland murder of Salim Hamzy and his father. Yep, Tufik. Uh, Tufik. So they've arrested people in relation to the cars. So they'll be saying they've got Tarek off the streets at the moment. They've got some people who relate to a double murder. Uh, they also had a guilty verdict in a, a 40 year old murder yeah. of Christopher Dawson. So, New South Wales police will be feeling very good. Um, they've still got a long way to go, and with a lot of murders, they're still, you know, they're still all unsolved, uh, most of them. Yes. Um, so, it's been quiet. But, it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting. I know, speaking, I remember it was immediately after Slim and Tufik were killed, I had a chat with. One of the top cops in New South Wales Police who said we will we will get there. It takes yeah. time, but we will get there. And what you've got is not only some of the best detectives in the state, some of the best detectives in the country who are just chipping away, yeah. and it's it's a slow process. And but they have always, even when they've come in for criticism, they have remained steadfast and, and confident that they will solve these. And you know it's been a, a good week for them, and, and they say that it's only going to continue. So, and likewise on the other side, you'll have these guys very very confident that they are not guilty of what they're being charged or yep. pursued over. So it'll be a then battle in the courts. So let's hope the streets stay quiet while the two sides battle it out in court on these ones. Yeah.